Hello, welcome to my workbench up here at Dongit's Model Railway. In previous videos I've mentioned these custom PCBs I had manufactured for ABC but never said how they were made or went into detail about exactly how they do what they do. The boards were created by a rapid prototyping service. I've almost run out of them now and it's time to order some more so it's an ideal time to talk about them. Rapid prototyping services like PCBWay allow you to upload a board you have designed yourself, have a small batch manufactured and posted to you. They use the same machines and processes that large run commercial products are made on. Your custom board can be etched, drilled, have the holes through plated, be coated to prevent accidental shorts and printed on both sides. The only difference is batch size. Instead of a run of thousands of boards for a commercial product, you can order as few as five at a time. There are also further options like multi-layer boards and surface mount component assembly. I haven't used these options yet, but I'm considering surface mount component assembly for future projects. Yes, I'm featuring PCBWay here specifically because this is a sponsored video. PCBWay reached out to me and asked if they could support the layout of the channel, and they've been kind enough to manufacture this latest set of boards for me. However, the first batch of ABC boards, plus a bunch of other stuff we've had made, like these PIC brownout protection dongles, have been ordered from Rapid Prototyping Services as customers. Skipping ahead to the bit where I already have a gerber file, uploading it to PCBWay is dead simple. And while there's a lot of different options for ordering your boards, it's all very straightforward and well laid out. Manufacturing is surprisingly quick, and you get lots of information about your boards as they progress through the manufacturing process. I uploaded my gerber file on the Friday, the review stage was complete within 10 minutes, and I could place the order straight away. The boards were made quickly and dispatched on the Monday. You can also see exactly where the boards are in the manufacturing process. PCBWay offer a large variety of shipping options. There are reasonably priced services that take about 10 days to ship around the world. There are also much more expensive courier services which can have your rapidly prototyped PCBs in your hand very rapidly. PCBWay have generously provided me with these boards and chose to send them via the rapid courier service. I had them in my hands by Wednesday afternoon, just two days to travel from China to Britain. Unfortunately, the courier did make a tiny mess of the box, but the PCBs themselves have been excellent in packed, and I'm pleased to report they are all in perfect condition. You might think that sounds like an expensive service, and I'd have thought so too, but volume makes everything cheaper, and they make enough PCBs for enough people that this kind of service is priced at a level that is accessible to hobbyists. The unit cost per board of these was a shade under £2 each, and the more you order, the cheaper this gets. The courier delivery service almost doubled that cost, but if you plan ahead and don't need things in a hurry, you can use the cheaper delivery services to keep this cost down. Bear in mind that a similar size piece of Veriboard from a local supplier is £2.50 each in similar quantities. It's much nicer working with boards like these than how things were when I first started designing my own electronics. Veriboard is a pre-manufactured board with horizontal tracks in it and a grid pattern of holes. You plan your circuit to have components and linking wires vertically, and use the board's tracks horizontally. If you need to cut a track, partially drilling it out at one hole is the normal method. Multi-pin components go in easily, if they use pins that line up with the grid. A dual inline chip works well, just cut the tracks in a line between each side. Some components, however, like these relays, don't line up with the grid and cannot be put nicely on Veriboard. It was also possible to etch a design on copper clad board. Starting with a piece of plain copper clad, you hand draw your circuit reversed on the copper with a special pen. Put it into an etch tank full of acid, wait a period of time for the acid to eat away at the exposed copper, pull it out, wash the acid off and scrub the pen off. You then need to drill your own holes in the board and solder the components in. If you wanted to put a component with a set pattern of pins on it like the relay we're using, that's fine, but you better be good at manually drilling those holes in exactly the right place. While I'm building up the first of these new boards, let's talk a bit about what ABC is, how it works, and what I'm doing with it. ABC is a way of introducing out-of-band data into DCC locally without either having to send information via the command station or cutting off the decoder from the command station. It is very simple electrically. You cut one of the track feeds and insert a circuit consisting of four diodes in series one way in parallel with one diode the other way. What is a diode? Electricity is often explained using comparisons to water. A diode is like a one-way valve. Electricity can flow one way, but not the other. We say that resistance is low in the forward direction and high in the backward direction. We have diodes facing both directions, so it might not be immediately obvious what's going on. 
but there is a small loss of voltage in the forward low resistance direction. The water equivalent would be some small loss of pressure used to keep the valve open. It is this small loss of voltage that is being used to create the ABC signal. DCC is a differential drive square wave. The DCC data is encoded in the timing of when the polarity swaps, which this does not interfere with. But in each direction there will be a different number of diode voltage drops. This will result in a voltage difference between when the left rail is high versus when the right rail is high. The decoder can see this difference and can react to it. This can be done either way round to provide two different signals to the decoder. What the decoder does with this information is up to its configuration. I have my decoder set to trigger a constant braking distance curve so the loco will stop a certain distance after first seeing the ABC signal. The two different potential signals are applied to the two different directions of travel. The decoder will ignore the signal corresponding to the other direction, so if you are driving away from a trackside signal, you don't get stopped. This isn't a DCC auto reverse or shuttle setup with a single captive train. I'm using the ABC braking to cause trains to brake and stop at red signals on main lines. I need to be able to switch off the ABC when the signal clears so I can let trains pass the clear signal. Switching it off is easy, just put a switch across the diodes. Short out the diodes with the switch, no ABC, no stopping. I need the computer to control the switch, so I'm using an electrically controlled switch, a relay. It's literally an electromagnet which pulls on a switch lever when energised. Electromagnets can create a spike when you stop driving them, so a smaller diode is put across the coil to squash any harmful spike before it gets to the electronics control of the relay. That's our completed circuit diagram. There are still a few problems with this. If the decoder gets a non-ABC signal, it will abandon the ABC braking curve. If it then goes back into ABC, the curve is re-established, but with a new stopping point. Metal wheels of stock can bridge the gap between the previous section and the current one and give that impression. Also, some trains don't have the loco at the front. One type of train I want to run is a push-pull set, which has the loco at the rear. Because of this, I wait until the train approaches the signal, and when a short section in front of the signal becomes occupied, switch the entire block over to ABC at the same time. This means I need at least as many ABC sections as I have signals and a few more to cover junctions and other sections which can lead to multiple different signals. Making them up just by soldering a few diodes together isn't an option when you need dozens of them. Some kind of convenient repeatability is required. That repeatability is why I went with rapid prototyping. A friend and I took the circuit diagram I developed just above, put it into a piece of software called KiCad, added some screw terminals and pin connection headers for connecting it to other modules and the rest of the layout, laid four copies of it side by side on a 100mm by 100mm PCB. Unlike Varuboard or the hand etched PCB I showed earlier, this has two layers, one on each side, so if one track needs to cross another, it can do so on the other side of the board rather than having to have loads of wire jumpers. The board I'm assembling is an updated design and there are some differences to the original. The original boards were a first foray into rapid prototyping and honestly we made some mistakes. Firstly, the row of five pins here means one pin of each of these screw terminals is common together. The other three become pointless. The screen printing calls this the zero volt pin, but the transistor relay driver we are driving these with doesn't want to be a current source and produce 12 volt to turn the relay on between its output and zero volt. It wants to be a current sink and turn the relay on between a 12 volt source and it when it pulls down to zero. To compensate for that, I've made the input side completely backwards, which means it doesn't line up with the printing. When it says 0 volt here, that's actually a 12 volt pin. Despite all of our schoolboy errors, these boards did the job, and the entire layout is running on them. I've used almost all of the first prototype set on the storage section of the layout. I need another batch for the upper level of the layout, and this was a great opportunity to update the design. Rapid prototyping means we can send a new design in each time we order a batch to fix any problems we found with the previous run. We've moved away from individual screw terminals for board-to-board -board connections and are using dual inline IDC socket. This results in a lot less spaghetti between the boards and makes everything easier and clearer to follow. We've fixed the mistake with the 12 volt 0 volt commoning, so it's labelled with a common 12 volt and individual pull-down pins to operate each relay. This 6-pin header is now set up to support a future monitoring board which will confirm power and show the state of each relay. On the first generation boards there was no possible way of confirming power and the only way of confirming a relay had operated was listening for the click. This board is now complete and ready for deployment. Before I can do that though, I need to do some more woodwork and get some more track laid. See you next time at Dongit's Model Railway.